I wanted to test out the 5.7K shooting mode on my new Pocket 6K Pro, and I also found this, my oldest, cheapest, crappiest lens, and I thought, why the hell not? Hi, my name's Joe from Joe Films. I hope you're all having a great day. Now in my last video, I said something that I may regret, or at least feel a little bit silly for saying. Now, if you watched my last video, thank you so much. Um, it's easily my best performing video, and I've loved reading all your comments and interacting with you guys, so keep them coming. Um, as for what I said, well, let's take a look. I haven't really explored too much. I've mainly just shot in 6K, 2.4 to 1 at a 5 to 1 compression ratio, and I actually love it, and I honestly can't see why I would ever not shoot like that. Yeah, about that. I do like the 6K mode, it's fantastic, but it does suffer from fairly substantial, but not terrible, shutter roll. So when I found out the 5.7K mode was supposed to be a lot better in that respect, I wanted to try it out for myself. Meanwhile, I was going through some old camera stuff and I happened across this guy. This is an iTurex 28mm f2.8, and spoiler alert, it's not great but I don't think it's reached its full potential, uh, but we'll get into that in a bit. Now, if you're anything like me, whenever you get something new, you find joy in pairing it up with all your old stuff, and it somehow brings new life into those things too. And that's exactly what happened when I found this little lens. I immediately put it on my 6K Pro to see how it would look. So firstly, take a look at this little collection of shots I took around my local area, and we'll talk about the 5.7K and this little lens afterwards. stop you right there because I know what you're going to say. That didn't look very good Joe. Uh, and while I know it's not the sharpest or cleanest lens out there, um, there are some things that I like about it um, and also some things that are working against it a little bit. A little bit. Now firstly the aperture ring is stuck wide open at f2.8. I can't adjust it. So focusing is very difficult, particularly when focusing for those sort of wide establishing type shots. Um, it's very soft. I mostly just punched in on the camera and did it by eye. Even the built-in focus assist didn't know what was going on. Secondly, this EF to MC adapter um, probably costs even less than the lens itself. Um, it's very cheap and it's got a locking mechanism which is very hard to do up. It also has this um, element in the adapter itself. I'm not really sure what it's doing, um, either some sort of speed booster or uh, compensating for a different flange distance, I don't know. But for the price I probably paid for it, um, it can't be that great and it might be the reason why everything is so soft um, when I'm focused to infinity, but who knows. Either way, I'm sure it's doing a very good job of making this lens look even worse than it may otherwise be. So just some more information about this little lens. I don't know much about it other than it's Japanese and I believe originally made to fit a Minolta 35mm film SLR camera. It has a pretty good close focusing distance of roughly 20 centimeters from my use of it and the bokeh is really quite nice, very soft and pleasing to the eye. Of course the sharpness of the lens isn't at all its best quality and you saw in the clips earlier that it struggles in outdoor contrasty situations. I have a few clips here though in a more controlled environment using my lighting setup and a lamp and I think it does quite well. It definitely has some softness still but some people would put that down as quote unquote character. I kind of like how it looks, it wasn't made to accurately resolve a 6k image so you can't expect the level of clarity you'd get from modern glass. I could maybe improve things by giving the front element a little clean. 
From the little research I've done on this lens though, I've yet to find an image of one that has this rear fastening behind the aperture ring. It's almost a bad version of a cinema lens locking mount. I think I could most likely improve this lens with a better adapter, but I do enjoy its quirks and it's just fun to use. Also the aperture ring doesn't turn all the way. Um, not that it matters because it's stuck open at 2.8 anyway. Um, but if you can see, the green diamond should line up with the green circle when you push this little thing in, but it doesn't. But it does when the adapter is off. So yeah, all in all, probably not the best. Um, and I'm, oh, there we go, I did it. There we go. Um, that's off now and will never go back on. So yeah, that is the iTurex 28mm f2.8. Um, not a great lens, wouldn't recommend. Um, unless you like some kind of soft bokeh, macro-ish kind of shots, um, it's pretty good for that. Um, but high contrast situations, yeah. Anyway, enough about this lens. Let's get back to the 6K Pro. The 5.7K is very nice and it does really get rid of a lot of the shutter roll that you get in the 6K mode. Now, I did shoot some very unscientific tests for you to look at and I actually found it quite difficult to portray the shutter roll of both the 6K and 5.7K modes without doing too many crazy over the top movements. I genuinely think the 5.7 is much better, but I felt I was more able to notice it after shooting 6K for a while and then switching to 5.7K and shooting like that. Breaking it down like this, it's very tricky to convey to you, but I think you get enough of an idea. I also captured a shot at 4K DCI in ProRes, just out of curiosity, and to my eye, it seems about on par with the 5.7B RAW. So I think for me, 5.7 is a better option all round. The downside to that, of course, is that you will be slightly more cropped in to get that one-to-one -one pixel readout. Uh, but with a lens like uh, Tokina 11-16 or a Canon 10-18 of super wide lens, you're not really gonna see that much difference. And the benefit of controlling that jello-like movement in your footage is definitely worth that slight crop. And I guess it's worth mentioning as well that no one's gonna shoot a video where the camera is panning back and forth really quickly, but it is a good way of demonstrating the differences in shutter roll. But if you are shooting, uh, you know, fast movements, cars, wildlife, um, these sorts of things, you'll want the least amount of shutter roll that you can possibly get to save your footage becoming distorted. But for the most part, and a lot of my shots, even in this video, um, I could have shot them at 6K and they would have looked fine because there wasn't much movement. And just as a side note as well, all the shots I took in this video with the Pocket 6K Pro, I shot at 5.7K, 12 to one. And I couldn't really see much of a difference when color grading the footage. And I mean, that could have been due to, you know, but um, for the most part, I think it's really good and I will definitely be exploring it further. But it's always good to know the best way to optimize your camera's performance in any given situation. So if you're shooting fast motion, now you know. 5.7K, my friend. That's that. So yeah, if you have some old gear lying around, dust it off and get out there and shoot some crappy old soft videos. <laughs> well, that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below to tell me your favorite piece of cheap or vintage camera equipment that you own. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and ring that little bell to be notified when I post new videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. But until then, stay safe and be a good human. I'm never going to be able to get this back together again. I'm going to twist it. Oh. I can't believe I just did that in like four seconds. Well.